right, Simon Banks, I want to ask you about this, this report. This morning we saw it in the Australian around gas retailers saying they are having trouble with supply because of the gas price cap. Feels like this was always a potential problem. Could this policy fail to work, the price capping? Yeah, look, I should just say for the record, Andrew, I do work for one of uh, one of the gas producers here oh, in Australia. Oh, there you go. Look, I think, you know, I just, uh, you know, just want to be honest. <laughs> no, and, good uh, on you. Front good on you. I appreciate matters. it. No. No, look, uh, look, I think one of the issues you're going to have is until the government at least settles the code of conduct, uh, which it's looking to do over the next couple of weeks, there are a lot of uh, people who are sitting on their hands waiting to see what that code looks like, what it means. I mean, you can see from the comments in the papers today that some of them want to know what's in that code just so they can make sure that their forward-looking contracts are written consistent with it. So there was always going to be a period between the announcement at the end of last year and when the final policy was settled uh, before uh, both producers, retailers and others in the gas supply chain would make their final positions uh, known. I think we're in that phase at the moment. What's really going to be important is what's in that code in a couple of weeks' time. And I think, you know, a lot of people around the industry are obviously saying to government that supply is really the issue that they need to uh, give the industry some confidence around uh, if they're going to get the these uh, changes through and they're actually going to have the effect that they want them to have, well, that's going to be a critical part for the code to discuss uh, when it comes out probably in about two or three weeks' time. All right, Peter McGoran, I want to ask about The Voice. Interesting tactics here, I think, from Peter Dutton. Probably a fair enough call for some more detail. How do you think it's going to play out for him? Well, it seems to be playing out extremely well internally. Your interview with Matt Keane is the latest in a long line of moderates. We've had Senator Dean Smith, Senator Andrew Bragg, uh, Julian Lisa, all leading lights of the moderate faction supporting Peter Dutton's uh, demand for further information. So um, he seems to have got everybody singing from the same hymn sheet. Still a long, long way to go on this, but if you have internal liberal unity, uh, you are a potent worry for the government. And Simon Banks, is Peter Dutton's call for detail reasonable? Could this issue mean it gets away from the government a bit? Oh, look, I don't think it will. I think you'll actually see even further detail obviously come out ahead of the, uh, the referendum. The reality is we actually know pretty much what this body's going to look like. We've got the Karma Langton report. It, in fact, uh, a version of, uh, of those recommendations were taken by Ken White, the previous uh, Indigenous Affairs Minister under the, uh, under the Morrison government, to the Cabinet on two occasions. Peter Dutton actually knows the answer pretty much to most of these questions, or at least the sort of bounds that are being talked about in how that body will be settled. What the government's going through now is actually quite a respectful process of consulting with Indigenous Australians about the final form that will take. But at the end of the day, the question we're voting on is not the detail of one particular version of what the voice might be. We're voting on a constitutional head of power and the authority that that gives, not only the current government, but future governments, to legislate on this matter. So, you know, if you get bogged down in the detail and pretend that that's what it's all about, you miss the fact that the actual question that's being put to the Australian people is one of principle, uh, and that's basically what Anthony Albanese has outlined with his draft version uh, of the words that should be put into the Constitution. And so far, Peter Dutton's not suggesting any actual amendment to those words uh, in response. Well, Peter McGoran, just finally a story that's... Uh uh, that's come about over summer of these members of the US Congress who are concerned about the AUKUS nuclear submarine steel and the capability of the US as a result. How much do you think this project will cost? Do you think it'll go ahead? Uh, where do you think it'll go from here? We've got this defence review coming down in March. It's going to cost a great deal, but it will go ahead because it's part of the an alliance built around the nuclear submarines between Britain, the United States and Australia, and it's in the three nations' interests that we share the technology and we, and we share the defence strategy. Look, I'm, I'm not panicking about the US senators who have questioned it. This is to be expected in the US system where the senators are very close to the defence industry. All the senators are saying is that the US needs two nuclear submarines a year and they're barely getting two a year. They don't want to compromise the US fleet for Australia, even though they recognise it's in the US interest that we have such capability in the Indo-Pacific. We are somehow... There has to be greater production 
Uh, otherwise, we will run into trouble. The only thing that's ever worried me, Andrew, was opposition within the defence establishment, within the Pentagon itself. We don't seem to have that. These are legitimate political uh, inquiries, issues being raised by US congressmen. It's the defence that I always thought and Australia feared uh, would be institutionally resistant to sharing the technology. So far, that hasn't surfaced. And that's what you've got to keep your eye on.